Hey everyone, welcome back to uh, another week. Um, I'm gonna be giving you three things I've learned this week. You can see I'm in London. This here is Canary Wharf behind me and you've got kind of this cutty suck over here. I'm in Greenwich at the minute. Uh, it's really, really nice view. I just wanted to give you my three things that I learned this week. So the first thing is, is that when it comes to many areas of life and business and personal development, a lot of people try to get everything aimed up, making sure everything is just right before they execute on an idea. And so if, if you think of it more like you're for a, a shooting range and you've got a gun, people try to imagine it like you had five or six guns. People try to aim, 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 aim. And then once everything's aimed correctly, then it's time to fire to get that bullseye. And, uh, you know, that's really difficult to do. And it's why a lot of people don't make progress um, you know, to get everything aimed up like that is, is, is a difficult thing and actually leads people to getting frustrated and it puts their aim off even more. The real way to do it is to start firing straight away. So really, it should be ready, fire, and then start aiming. So once you're already, I know if you were doing this in real life, you wouldn't want to start firing a gun before you've aimed it. But in terms of us creating a, a video like this or launching your own business or trying to get in shape, something like that, you don't want to make sure until you've got all of the gym clothing or all of the perfect shoes or all of the protein shakes and the vitamins and everything like that. Because what will happen is, is, uh, you see, you'll, you'll have not have the money for everything straight away. You might not have all of the equipment. Where, whereas if you just sat down and started doing, you know, 50 burpees, 100 sit-ups, something like that, you're already going to find that you're in much, much better shape. And so really, uh, what I've learned this week is to aim, 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 aim. Do not do that. What you should be doing is firing, firing, firing. And then as you're firing, trying to aim and get better because just the process of starting it is important enough. Now, the second thing that I've learned this week, uh, I actually, this is related to health. Um, I started to uh, do a program that someone rec recommended to me uh, and it was to build muscle. And I had to be in a calorie surplus. Now I've never eaten 3,200 calories before, uh, which was what I needed to be in a surplus is what I was told. Uh, and what happened was, I was force feeding myself so much food and I felt so, so bad. Um, and really, I should not have done such a thing because it really made me really, really ill. Um, I was force feeding myself and following the exercises that they told me. Um, and it was, it was way too much food for such a little exercise. And I was certain that this wasn't right because I felt awful. I felt I had stomach cramps, headaches, I felt sick. And I confirmed with this person who uh, is quite a fit person, they do CrossFit. I assume that they sort of knew what they were doing and what this book was telling me to do. And, you know, I, I asked three separate times, are you sure this is what I should be doing? Um, and I got very ill. And only like four days after this, uh, they kind of just said, okay, maybe you should not do it, just listen, listen to your body. Um, and I think that's what I need to do in future when you try to do something like this that in incorporates your health is to make sure that you are listening to your body. If you're force feeding yourself, if you feel don't feel well, you shouldn't be pushing yourself both in terms of nutrition and what you're eating or in terms of exercise. And it's something that I should have done because I was in this surplus for two days of 3,200 calories when I should be eating roughly 2,400, 500. Um, what happened was I ended up putting on five pounds, which is about 2.2 kilos um, of fat in two days. I, my, my stomach just blew out and I felt awful. Um, and you know, that's, that was something that I could tell them that first day, this isn't right. This is not the amount that I should be eating. Um, and you know, it was, it was very frustrating. I was very angry when I, when I saw what, what, had, what had happened to myself, um, because I didn't listen to myself. I knew that it was too many. Um, and so I think you should always listen to your body uh, when you know, you're doing anything that's in terms of exercise or something of that matter. Um, so the third thing, this is another thing that kind of annoyed me today. All these things that are kind of annoying me are, are external to me, but I know that I must not allow it to control me because if I do, and um, that's when it annoys me. I am in power of what can frustrate me and what cannot. Um, and so I'm letting this just breeze over me like the water down there. <laughs> I'm, I'm not trying to let it get to me. But what happened is the third thing I'm going to talk to you about is customer experience and how important it can be, not in terms of just having a business or a storefront, but if you have someone who has your own clients. So for me, um, 
what I had, I've had back problems for quite a while and I wanted to go see a chiropractor um, just to sort of like click my back back into place and make me feel much, much better. Um, and I went through a service called Treatwell, their website, and I booked um, to 12.15 today in Greenwich to come and get my back fixed. Um, and I turn up at the given time and the guy, he was a bit like Squidward from Spongebob. He had not many emotions, he had a very monotone voice and he was just not a people person. He really didn't care uh, about anything, really. He just seemed very laid back, but not in a good laid back, more like a, he didn't, I don't know. I don't know, I, I think maybe he had something um, with him, with his personality really that and it stops him from like communicating and, and being good with people. Um, but I turned up and I, apparently I was not um, there for an appointment. I was not in the book. I was not on their database. They had no idea who I was or why I was there. Um, obviously, this is very frustrating. I'm taking time out of my day. think I'm going to come and get an appointment and they don't even know what, what I'm doing here. Uh, and basically all that they did was uh, he said to me, uh, I can book you in two weeks from now. And uh, really, he just was very unapologetic. He didn't say sorry once. Um, he didn't, didn't, I don't know, he just didn't seem to care about the problem um, and, and didn't seem to care the fact that I also had paid a lot of money through this online service um, and he acted like he didn't, he hadn't heard of it despite the fact that his business was up on this website. So I came out of there, I spoke to this serv the, the people who run this website, this app, um, and they were apologetic. They refunded me the money and also gave me a £10 voucher. Uh, and what they did was they also said, um, that he had opened the emails and that he had, um, you know, recognised and apparently what he'd done is he'd overbooked many people in that day um, and he does that on purpose because he knows that people will pull out and not turn up um, so he double books to make sure he gets twice as amount as money. I think that this is an awful strategy uh, because now what he's done is he's annoyed me. He has uh, lost a customer. I will never go back to that place. Um, and I'm, I guess I'm going to end up going to see someone else, one of these competitors and putting money into their business. Um, you know, some things like these kind of happen. You know, you can double book and it can just be an honest mistake. I think that's fine. Um, but it was how unapologetic he was. I said to him, thank you very much. I was very kind. Um, and he just sort of stared at me for a good five seconds. It was this really awkward moment where we stared at each other for five seconds. He didn't say sorry, he didn't say bye, he didn't say anything. He really, really didn't seem to care at all. And so uh, I think it comes down to customer service. If you want to build your business, you want to have reoccurring customers and that starts with treating potential new customers um, with respect. Um, you know, if something goes wrong, you make sure that you fix it, you put it right. Um, and so, yeah, it's, it's very disappointing. Um, and I think that the way he handled that situation was quite poor. And so what I've learned this week is for all client work, for all customers, you should be as, uh, as you know, as, as good as you can be to retain them and to offer them an experience that they won't forget and will want to make them come back and recommend you in future. Whereas if I see that place again and I'm walking with someone, I'll say never ever go there because it's awful, really, really poor service. And so yeah, that there is my three things for this week. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please give it a like and subscribe. Uh, I post something like this roughly every Friday. Um, and yeah, I hope to see you all next week. Thanks for watching, bye.